Hey guys, welcome back to episode two of Watchlist. This is the show where I go on Japanese auction websites, I look at watches that I'm interested in, and I discuss what I think the final value or the final winning bid will be, and also talk about the bid that I placed myself. So, to start us off with this episode, we're going to be looking at the SBGA 083. Now, this watch is probably the most affordable spring drive watch you can buy. Especially the SBGA 083 because this is the older model of the SBGA 283. The main difference being that in this model here, you can see that the at the top we have Grand sorry at the top we have Seiko, but at the bottom is when we have the Grand Seiko logo. So it's kind of repetitive or redundant, and that's why yeah this one was phased out for the single logo that you can see in the SBGA 283. So, I thought that this was pretty interesting. It looks like this model has, or this listing, sorry, has the complete box. It has a few extra links. Seems like it's in pretty good condition. And so, the current price is about $1,500 Canadian dollars. And there's about seven hours left. I bid about $2,000 Canadian dollars in total. So, nothing too expensive. I'm not really aiming to buy this. I think that the final price will be around maybe like $2,800. To 3,000 Canadian dollars, which is, if I can do the conversion right, it's about 2,300 US dollars, or maybe around 2,500 US dollars. Again, I think this watch I'm not really interested in because I already have a spring drive watch. I have my SBGA 427, which is actually kind of similar, right? Like, if you look at the two watches, you know, you have the sword, Dauphine hands, you have the power reserve, the date wheel. You have the markers. It actually looks pretty similar. So I'm not gunning for this, but you know what? $2,000, maybe I'll get it. And if I don't, that's okay. All right, so now we're going to switch to From Japan, which is another proxy shopping service. But this time, the watches we're going to look at come from FJ Auctions, which is an exclusive service offered by From Japan to some of their members. So we're first going to look at the Sarb 001. So this watch right here. This was released back in the early 2000s, and this model right here has the blue sunburst effect, but it also has this multifaceted crystal, which a lot of modern watches just don't have anymore. And so, in terms of the condition, it's not in the best shape. You can see here there's kind of some scratches and some pits on the case. And yeah, there's the bracelet, the case back. You can see it has the 6R15C movement. And I think, based on the serial number, this watch was released back in June 2006. So, it probably has been a while since it's been last serviced. And you can see here, for whatever reason, this、uh, listing has two watches, sorry, two bracelets. So, the bracelet included, and also this extra one here, as well as the box. I'm not too sure if the warranty or the instruction information is inside that box, but I guess you'd have to win to find out. And so, yeah, it seems like the condition wise, if I do win this, I would probably have to get it serviced because that day difference, it's not very accurate. And right now, the starting price was $600. Reference winning price is about $1,000. And that's how much I bid. I bid $1,000 Canadian dollars. But I've seen this watch go on listings for about $1,800 Canadian dollars plus, which is about like $1,500 US dollars or higher. So I bid $1,000 because I would probably have to get this serviced because it's not in the best shape. I believe there's some chips and some scratches on the crystal. So I still think it's worth at least a thousand if I can get it serviced, plus, you know, the taxes, shipping and handling, duty fees. In total, it'll probably cost around $1,500, $1,600 maybe. But I still think that's a pretty good deal because you don't really see this very often listed on the internet. All right, so next up we have the Seiko SZSB006, and this is a watch to commemorate the 35th anniversary of Tic Tac. This is not the Tic Tac like the mints, but this is Tic Tac like the retailer in Japan. So, right here we have a dial that looks similar to the Seiko Alpinist actually. And yeah, so you got the black dial. We kind of have these cream colored indices and hands. And the back, we can see we have the 4R35, which is actually quite unfortunate. I wish it had the 6R35 movement with the 70 hour power reserve, but I guess that's okay. And we do have the warranty information and all the box and all the papers are included. The current bid is $551. You can find these online for about $700 to $800 Canadian dollars. So for me, I actually just bid 49,000 yen because I'm not actually a huge fan of this watch. 
I feel like it's kind of like an Alpinist, but again, it only has the 4R35 movement with a 42 hour power reserve, which I think is quite unfortunate. But if I do win this watch, then I'll be able to make a video and then probably sell it on eBay or something like that. So yes, my bid is about $561, so a bit $10 more than the current bid. But yeah, I'll see this. I think it'll win maybe at the $600 mark, maybe $600, $650 for the Seiko SZSB006. All right, last but not least, we're going to try and get another Omega Speedmaster reduced. So last time I was unsuccessful, so we're going to try bidding on this one. You can see that the crystal is not in the best shape. There's a few scratches, but the dial seems to be okay. Same with the case, the backing, you know, there's some dirt, some scratches, but nothing too bad. Looks like the warranty card is not filled out, but it does come with all the original papers and the boxes. So that's good to see. I think last time when I bid for a Speedmaster Reduced, I bid $1,500. And this time I bid $1,650. So I pushed it a little bit higher. But again, I think this will sell for maybe like $2,300 Canadian dollars, maybe $2,400. So I don't expect to win it again. But, you know, I might get lucky and yeah, I might be able to snag a Speedmaster Reduced for $1,650. Even though I probably will have to service it. And if I take it to the official Mega Service Center, it's about a thousand bucks. So we will wait and see. All right, so price reveal time. We're going to start with the SBGA 083. So again, I placed a bid for 180,000 yen. And the final price is 183,000 yen. So that's about just a $30 difference. So I was actually really close to uh, winning this one. And I'm partially glad that I didn't because. Again, I didn't really want this watch, but you know, it's 2,100 Canadian dollars, a little bit over that. So I think that's a pretty good deal actually. And when I got, if I won this watch, I probably could have flipped it. In my opinion, at least maybe 24, maybe $2,500 on eBay. So I think whoever won this got a pretty good deal because you got a $2,000 spring drive watch. That's quite affordable. All right, let's talk about the Saab 001 again. So my bid was 90,000 yen, which is about $1,000. The final winning bid is 90,000 yen. So I was actually the top bidder for this item, but I actually did not win this item, which to me, I was really confused at first. So when I talked to the From Japan staff, uh, they told me that the reason why, even though I was the highest bidder, I didn't win in the end, was because whoever sold this watch or whoever offered this for a listing, they probably had this at a display in a store and during this auction someone actually purchased this in person and that's why even though i won i can't get this item because it's already been sold and this is actually a problem with all different web uh, auction websites is that they'll list the item online but they'll also have the item on sale in a store so sometimes even though you win an auction you actually won't get the item in the end because it's been sold in person so it's a little bit frustrating and it really sucks that I wasn't able to get it, but again, sometimes you just don't get the best luck. Next up, we had the Seiko Tic Tac watch, and I placed a bid for 48,125 yen. The final winning bid is 50,625 yen. So I was only about $20 off from a winning price. Again, I actually didn't really like this watch that much. If I were to win it, I'd probably sell it quickly after. I would just make a video about it and then yeah, just get rid of it. So again, I was really, really close, but I was slightly overbid for this one too. And finally, for that Omega Speedmaster Reduced, I placed a bid for about $1,600 Canadian, and the final winning price is 223,000 yen, so about 2,500 Canadian dollars. And interestingly enough, that is the winning price of the last Omega Speedmaster I bid for, which was about a month ago or so. So it's, yeah, it seems like $2,500 seems to be the average price for these Speedmasters, at least from FJ Auctions. So FJ Auctions, it seems like the bids are high, but if you go onto Yahoo Auctions Japan, sometimes you can get it for about $2,000. So I'm not sure why these bids are so high, but I guess I'll just keep trying until eventually I win it. So that's it for episode two of Watchlist. You can tell that I was very close to winning quite a few of these auctions, and I actually technically won one of them except that the item was already sold to someone else. So yes, some very close auctions. I'm kind of glad I didn't win all of them because that would be a lot of money spent. 
But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you look forward to the next episode of Watchlist. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time.